I think when you think about being blindsided in a moment, you're human, you're hurt, you don't understand why life has not gone the way you envisioned it. You don't understand why you're hit with these set of challenges that just don't make sense to the evolution of where you're going. But then when you survive that thing, it's like, wow, I'm so glad that that occurrence ushered in this new level of blessings that I didn't even think I deserved. I didn't even think was was possible for me. Hey, family, I'm Kendra Moore, and you are doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Hey, family, welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Hey family, welcome to another episode. I am so excited that you are here and I don't take it lightly that you decided to hit that play button and spend about an hour of time with me. So with that being said, I want you to know that I am 100% invested in your self-awareness journey. So you better believe that every week I'm bringing my A-game for providing you the tools necessary to live a more fulfilled, purpose-driven life. And so family, I want to remind you to please take a moment to leave a five-star rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Because as you know, I set a lofty goal to touch 1 million hearts within the first two years, and I could only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode, share this conversation with at least four people you know, and repost on your favorite social media platform. Also, don't forget to click the join community link that's in the show notes so we can stay connected and continue the conversation. Well, today is week nine on our Strategize Your Vision series. And in case this is your first time listening to the Living on True podcast, this series starts at episode 54. Now, this series is based on my Master Life class, Strategize Your Vision, which is where I teach you the step-by-step formula for building a rock-solid strategy to manifest the vision that you have for your life. Now, the reason we need a strategy for having the life that we want, it's because strategy works. <laughs> Just simple as that. Strategy works. <laughs> Any person with, you know, half of a successful idea, okay, that set out to get it done, started with a strategy. Tell me at least one person that you know, one successful person that you know, whether it's in their career, in their business, or pursuing an education, right? that went after their goal and did not have a plan in place. Tell me one successful person that you know that did not have a plan in place. So with that being said, why are you setting goals and creating these vision boards with no strategy? Because you have no idea how to take the basic principles of strategy and turn it into a formula that you can use to manifest the vision that you want or to manifest the life that you want. Well, Over the last nine weeks, we had brilliant, informative conversations just laying out actionable steps that you can take today to help you build the strategy that you need to start living the way that you want to. And for those of you who already know this, and this is nothing new, (laughs) but maybe you stuck at the how. How do I do that, Keisha? Then you need to visit strategizeyourvision.com for more information. Okay, so... Maybe you're at the point where your hope or your confidence or your faith are damn near depleted, right? Because of all the unrest, all the uncertainties that was caused by the pandemic. We are a year into living in this pandemic and we're still wearing masks. And these masks are a constant reminder that things will never be the same. Things will never go back to the way it used to be. And some of us are happy about the changes because, you know, we choose or they chose to focus on 
the positive, yet some people are still in a negative space, in a negative headspace, and too afraid to make a decision, right? Because in their mind, this pandemic represents uncertainty. Well, let's talk about that today. And we're going to talk about that with one of my favorite fellow podcaster friends, Kendra Moore. Now, Kendra is such a beautiful beautiful young lady with a heart of gold and she's definitely super wise be beyond her years and when you listen to the conversation you're definitely going to agree with me and I can go you know on and on about how wonderful Kendra is but I want to formally introduce her to you. Kendra Mora is a thriving motivational speaker from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. For over six years, she has built her own podcast, hashtag Fill the Cup Podcast, and recently a new YouTube channel. After pursuing her broadcast journalism degree from Florida A&M University, she was prepared to create her own multimedia journey. Kendra's dream is to travel the world and have her own talk show, encouraging women of all ages to own their self-love and seek peace through our creator. You can follow and connect with Kendra on Instagram at More Motivation, and her podcast, Fill the Cup Podcast, can be found can be found on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts, as well as connect with her on her YouTube channel, More Motivation. All right, family, sit back and enjoy my conversation with Kendra Moore. Kendra, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, absolutely. I'm so excited to to have this conversation. Um, to have this conversation with you. You know, I start off every um, podcast episode just talking about how I come to know the person that I'm speaking with, and this is no different. So, you guys, I'm smiling really, really hard because this is like a full circle moment right now because back in 2017. I pitched Kendra to be on her podcast. She has a podcast called Fill the Cup Podcast. It's amazing. So if you haven't heard of it, I'm going to need you to go and subscribe over on SoundCloud. Check her out. Um, but I pitched her to be on, on her podcast and she said yes. And I'm just smiling really hard because Kendra, I remember being so freaking nervous because your podcast was the first interview first podcast I had ever done ever and I was so freaking nervous like just behind the scenes because we didn't do we didn't do video it was just right video. so right. I was like nervous shaking because I'm just like oh my god am I gonna say something about trip over my words like what am I gonna <laughs> do I was so freaking nervous but um you was just so warm you so easy to talk to and my nerves eventually just kind of like subsided and I, I think I probably sounded like I had some sense <laughs> 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 the, uh, no but let's no you had to tell them how you even found me I thought it was the craziest thing I knew it was God ordained because I'm like hey family quick announcement if you're ready to go deeper and would love to continue the conversation outside the podcast then I have something just for you I'm creating a safe, judgment-free community of like-minded people to grow and build the support team that we need to operate in purpose. If you want to join me, please visit livingherttruthpodcast.com and then click the join community button so we can partner together on your self-awareness journey. I am looking forward to getting to know each and every one of you. I am so excited to deep dive into your purpose. And we're going to have such a great time, you guys. I look forward to seeing you in the group. Now, back to the conversation. You just happened to search, I think you said woman or some type of inspiring podcast you put in Google. And then somehow you came across my podcast. And yep. then I believe you either DM me or message me. And then the rest is history. That's just crazy. Like, cause at that time I was still new. So I didn't even feel worthy of somebody being, you know, proud of, of what I was doing. That was like a big mm -hmm. deal for me. So you, you definitely made me feel so much more excited about the future of my podcast and oh, look at us now. Look at us now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that yeah I, I did um just did a, a a random search it's so crazy you guys if you 
you know, started listening to my podcast from the beginning, you know, my business started off with a random search. I'm telling you, these random searches that we think are random, but not mm-hmm. necessarily right, ra- random, you know, they divinely, you know, um, guided. But yeah, I just did a search, listened to a couple of your episodes and just thought you was amazing. And yeah, sent you an email just asking me <laughs> to be on the podcast. And she said yes. And that was just like the most nervous interview ever. And not, I, mean, I wasn't nervous because of like Kendra. I was just nervous because like this, it was the first time and I just wanted to mm-hmm. um, just do a good job. This is somebody's mm-hmm. podcast. I just wanted to do, just wanted to do a good job. And so it's a... Uh, of course, I would have you here on my podcast because at the time, me starting a podcast, that wasn't even a thought in my mind. Yeah. You know? So now that I have one, of course, I have to bring back the person who gave me a shot, you know, at doing it. But, um, afterwards, I started following you on Instagram, you know, mm-hmm. and listening and continuing to like listen to your podcast. And Kendra, even though you are younger than me i swear you are wise beyond your years like seriously mm-hmm. i truly learn things from you all the time and i'm just so fascinated with the fact that you are a, a millennial and you love god and i guess i'm fascinated by that because i feel like the younger generation we have done you guys a disservice to a certain extent you know mm-hmm. when it comes to you know spirituality and when it comes to you know believing in god like i was literally just we was literally just talking about this in my bible study group this you know this morning we we're just talking about how you know the younger generation it was just like you go on to church you better believe in god <laughs> no yeah no explanation why right. who is god what is this all right. about nothing about building you know relationships <laughs> a relationship with god and so right. I'm just, yeah, I'm just mesmerized by you because you love God and you talk mm-hmm. about God. You, you know, you're not afraid to, you know, to, to talk about him at all. And I just love mm-hmm. that because I feel like we need that because you guys are literally our future. You're literally our future. And on your um, podcast, one of your podcast episodes really stood out to me because you talked about the blessing in being blindsided. I was like, come through, Kendra, (laughs) with the blessing in being blindsided. Let me listen to this episode real quick. (laughs) And so I really want us to dive a little deeper, dive a little deeper in that, into that, because the pandemic was obviously, had obviously blindsided us, right? Mm -hmm. And so I really want us to change the narrative around that, change our mindset around that, and talk about, you know, the blessing in, in being blindsided so we can thrive beyond the pandemic. Exactly. Woo, that's that's heavy. So um yeah the blessing in being blindsided I think that we have to realize that being blindsided or new things happening um around us are not a punishment. Uh they are I would say divine and intentional events that God brings us in order to allow something new to come in you know and so every time in my life where I've been blindsided where I've been shocked by somebody's actions where I've been hurt by something where something didn't go as planned it was always something better on the other side so I think when you think about being blindsided in a moment you're human you're hurt you don't understand why life has not gone the way you envisioned it. You don't understand why you're hit with these set of challenges that just don't make sense to the evolution of where you're going. But then when you survive that thing, it's like, wow, I'm so glad that that occurrence ushered in this new level of blessings that Mm -hmm. I didn't even think I deserved. I didn't even think was, was possible for me, but it became possible Mm -hmm. just because of the fact that I accepted it. I didn't run from it. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, you know, it was all a part of God's plan for my life. Mm, I love that. And, you know, I'm thinking because the, what ran across my mind is, are we truly blindsided? Because if you're paying attention, like, 
there's probably signs that God has given us, or there's probably signs that we that we've seen, and it's probably we're probably just ignoring the thing, right? Mm-hmm. Because He's going to show us what it is that we need to know, right? Because everything is already planned out. If you believe in God, right. right, you have to believe that everything is already planned out. So it's like, are we blindsided because it's not what we truly want? We haven't mm-hmm. accepted a situation just mm-hmm. yet. Um, we don't want to be challenged in this area. In this exactly. area, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We, don't we definitely to don't want to be challenged. <laughs> Definitely don't want to be challenged. So yeah. that's for sure. Um, I think the biggest thing is relationships blindside you. I think that's the oh. biggest thing when you think about being blindsided because mm-hmm. the most times in my life where I remember being blindsided, aside from just jobs and drama or sickness or or just family issues, is the biggest thing that has blindsided me in relationships is is the people that I'm in relationships with, you know, whether that be friendships, romantic relationships, like mm-hmm. That's where all of my thoughts go when I remember what it was like to feel like I would never expect that from that person. I would never expect that person to say that, to do that, to betray me in that way, to turn their backs on me. And now that that person is not in my life or now that we've recovered from that situation, it was almost like it was one of the best things ever happened. It taught us a lot about ourselves individually, but it taught us a lot about who we are to each other and how communication is important. It taught us, you know, how in order, if if you're really meant to go where I'm going, this needed to happen. So it's, it's, it's a beauty in ugliness when that you kind of see from somebody when you're like, wow, you showed your true colors, but there's a beauty in that for me because I finally don't have to like kind of believe something that's not really true. I should say, and specifically friendships, like I remember, in, I would say um, towards the end of like beginning of 2019, I lost like a big friendship. And that was like a big hit to to my life because I've known this person for over 13 years. And it just it didn't make any sense as to why we weren't friends anymore. It, it seemed so small to me. It seemed so petty. Um And I just remember just being really like hurt and, and didn't understand it. But it was also that situation allowed me to value the friendships that I do have that, that are still there. And that relationship also caused me to, or that end of a friendship caused me to learn more about myself. It yeah. allowed me to address mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff that I mm-hmm. hadn't addressed. And it allowed me to analyze the type of friend I want to be going forward in. It, it just taught me so much. So it was almost like I'm so thankful that happened in a way because I learned a lot about that person, but I also learned so much more about myself. And I, I learned, you know, what friendships meant for me going forward in adulthood. So all of that was a big deal for me. Um, and then, of course, romantic relationships. I mean, especially yeah. ladies, we understand what it's like to be hurt by a man or to just not expect something. And, and because you thought that was forever and the fact that they completely blindsided you with information or with their actions or with their words and it just didn't make sense as to why this has to happen now especially when I planned my life around this person so now that it's over and now I've had time to heal mm-hmm. it's almost like yeah I'm so grateful that happened so yeah that's that's just examples of how relationships can literally usher you in to an increase in your life. Like literally like increase mentally, spiritually, emotionally, like Mm -hmm. you would have never been as wise as you are now had those people not been who they were supposed to be to you. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, and sometimes the blindsidedness could be something that can prevent something down the line because again we don't know what's you know we don't know what's to come you know when you gave the example of relationships it made me think about uh me and my husband because before we got married you know um before we got married jeremy uh told me a little something about his past as it relates to sickle cell it's 
no secret right. that Jeremy has sickle cell. I've shared that, you know, before here on the podcast. Yeah. And so um, he kept it from me because to him, it was a big deal. But for me, it really wasn't a big deal. So when he, when he told me, cause it was, it was because the way he presented to me, it was him confessing. <laughs> I got something to confess. And I'm like, something to confess. Like what's going on? And when he told me it really wasn't, to me, it wasn't a big deal, but to him, it was a big deal. So in that moment, I felt blindsided because it's like, wait a minute. So you, you made the decision to lie to me. Like, why, like, why would you lie to me? And instead of like honing in on that and really being mad at him for that, it woke me up. Cause like you said, Mm -hmm. sometimes it teaches you being blindsided. You learn something about yourself and what, you know, stood out for me. It was just like, wait a minute. I had put this man on this pedestal thinking that he would never do this and this and this and this. Oh no, Jeremy would never do this. Cause that's how I felt about him, you know, and I still do to a certain extent, but not like I, but not right. I had put this man on this pedestal. And in that moment I realized, Hey, he's human. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I had put all this pressure on this man. He didn't even know I had put all this pressure on this man. And I could have went into my marriage, had put all this pressure on him to be something that he literally could not even be, wow. right? This perfect individual who would never lie, who would never cheat, who would never hurt me. And not to say that he will, but you know, it's, it's the pressure. And I so glad that I had that revelation so glad that I was blindsided if you will because there's no telling what type of craziness that would have caused in my marriage because he would have mm-hmm. been on castle that he didn't even know that he was on and he would have exactly. been to a standard that he didn't even know existed right that's that's not even <laughs> that's not even capable of yeah. being reached you know so it's like sometimes God does certain things or allows certain things to happen so we can be woken up. Right. And that's the message that you just said, because I think a lot of women, we don't realize that like a lot of men that we give this kind of invisible pedestal to, it's almost like they had no preparation of what it was to take that on. Like they weren't even ready. They don't, they, they really can't handle the, the pedestal that we've already prepared for them like they had no clue that they were worthy of that and so when they fail (laughs) with the pedestal that you created in your mind Mm -hmm. it's almost like you have to almost look at yourself and say well no I created that I started that Mm -hmm. you know I put that on them when Mm -hmm. that was never something they could handle you know they haven't even evolved to to be able to own up to that pedestal I don't think anybody can because things change life changes so much um our emotions change so much so I think it's it's just important to there's there's a such thing as healthy pedestals and then there's unnecessary pedestals that yeah. only put a strain and it put pressure on the person who's not there yet where you have them at where you already have upheld them to so yeah yeah I agree you know because I know I've been put on pedestals just was just you know within my family not intentionally right. They probably don't even right. know that they had me up there, but they did, you know, right. and it was, uh, you know, it, it, it was unfair for me and it affected me in a way. So, so yeah, so I'm, I'm glad I had that. I'm glad I had that revelation before, um, before we got married. So Jerry, if you're listening to this, boo, don't, eat, don't worry about it. We good. <laughs> <laughs> we good. <laughs> so I know many people, um, feel pressure, you know, speaking of pedestals and, and expectations. I know a lot of people have put a, a lot of pressure on 2021 producing this magic pill for them. Yeah. Right. This yeah. magic pill that their life is going to turn around. Everything is going to be great in mm. 2021. But the truth of the matter is we have no idea what 2021 is going to bring. For all we know, God forbid, life can get worse. The economy, you know, can get worse. And we may be in positions where we have to make some really difficult decisions, right? Right. So, and, and decisions that can affect how, or if we operate in purpose, because, you know, here on the podcast, I'm all about operating in purpose, 
but we can have decisions that will affect that. So I want to know, how do we take the time to hear God's voice when making these difficult decisions? And if you can, give us some actionable steps. How do we take the time to hear God's voice Mm -hmm. um, in the decisions that we make? So I would say a lot of prayer and meditation because I, I just think that my life is a huge representation of the personal time I spend with God. So you can tell in my life when I'm not spending a lot of time in God and you can tell when I am, you follow me. I think that's, that's just like, a, it's like a spiritual kind of revelation. You can tell when somebody's routines, when their decisions are a direct reflection of, of the time that, that they make a priority to spend with Christ. So the main way I hear God's voice is I communicate with him constantly throughout the day. I don't always, I would say, set a specific time. I just talk to him whenever I'm trying, whenever I get caught up leaning into my own decisions and my own understanding and my fleshly understanding, or if I'm trying to ask advice from other people too much and I'm leaning on other people's perspective too much, or when I feel like I'm using perspectives of social media and just everybody but him so the main way is I have to be in communication with him constantly that's the only way I'm going to hear his voice because God's voice to people is something different everybody has their own uh, I would say revelation or perspective or experience of what God's voice means to them like for me it's not this audible you know special person in the sky it's literally just an innate sense where something will happen and I feel him kind of giving me revelations on things and speaking to me through occurrences and telling me, you know better than that or this is not the right way to go. And so I feel like with this new year, 2021, it's so important that we don't lean on our own understanding, that we don't lean on the understanding of our friends, that we don't put our friends great articulation of how they make things sound or how good they are at hyping us up or how quick, how dependable they are when we call them, that we don't put that over what God is and what he is capable of being. Like he has to reign supreme over everything that all the other voices you hear, because it's easier to, I would say, be comfortable with just the reliance of just somebody being there in front of you and saying something nice and that makes sense. But it's, it, it takes work to build that relationship with God where his voice becomes so much more clear. And you're going to trust his voice before you trust everybody else because you spent that time. So I just think it's so important that we realize and that we don't give so much credit to our own perspectives. Like we have to constantly adopt that and literally um, switch that off for for what God's understanding is, what he, what it is that he's trying to tell us. Because he speaks to us so many different ways. Mm-hmm. It's just, you got to spend that time with him. So prayer, uh, Bible study, meditation, don't look at your phone and go to social media early in the morning and, um, and not talk to him. Uh, just thanksgiving, not praying to him only when you want something pray to him with just i'm thankful for this i'm thankful for that uh make sure that you're in constant devotion when you are um needing to figure out a certain thing in your life and you you need his consultation so it takes work even if it's 30 minutes a day hour a day to just spend time with him is so important to the next half of your life Man, I needed to hear that, friend. I needed to hear that, you know, God's voice is different for everybody. Yes. You know, because um, I watch sermons online in addition to, well, mm-hmm. everything is virtual now because of because of the pandemic. Right. But I watch sermons online in addition to like going to church. And when I hear people say, you know, the Lord, you know, spoke to me, you know, I was just like, well, dang, is he, why is he not speaking? Why is mm-hmm. he not speaking to mm-hmm. me? But I had to learn that, you know, uh, like you said, God speaks to everybody differently. And when you have a relationship with him and you spend time with him, then it's easier for you to um, hear his voice and know his voice and know the difference between, you know, am I listening to my mama? 
is this guy or is this right my fears? right you know, are, are these my fears talking you know um and, and when you talked about you know not getting your head you know um blown up from like friends and stuff like that let me tell you my bible study partner um i was talking to her in bible study one day and um i was telling her how my husband told me he was just like you know thank you. Thank you for always just being you, being who you are. He was just like, because, you know, whatever you believe in, you go after it, you go hard for it, you know, just thank you, you know, just thank you for that. And I was telling her, I was just like, you know, I couldn't even accept that. And because I felt like a hypocrite, because it's this one person in my life who feels as though that I am the worst person ever. Like I am the devil from hell, the, the, you know, the devil himself. Right. And so it's like, I was talking to her and I was just like, why is it this one person can just like not allow me to accept the compliments or the people who say, and Keisha, this episode changed my life. You know, when you said this, this changed my life or whatever. And she was just like, you know, maybe that's God's way of keeping you humbled. Because mm. what if you, you know, fell victim mm. to what everybody is saying? Oh, you so mm. wonderful, you so wonderful, you so wonderful. And yeah. then you blow your head gets blown up. And then That's next good. thing you know, you have you're falling away from God. Right? Wow. Because you think that you you know it all or whatever. So maybe that's his way of just, you know, keeping you, you know, keeping you humbled and he yeah. yeah. and connected yeah. to him. And I was just like, wow. That's deep, friend. That's very thank deep. You for, uh, <laughs> thank you for thank you for telling me that. <laughs> now I feel you know now I can accept a compliment without feeling hypocritical, but also keeping in mind that, girl, you ain't perfect. You right. You human too. You human too. You know, <laughs> you ain't perfect. But um, so with that being said, how do we how do we rest in God? How do we like, how do we do that? Because yeah, we we need to have uh, a relationship and with everything that's going on with this pandemic, you know, people are probably like, I do pray, I do meditate, you know, I do study the word, but I still don't understand why my loved one was affected by this Mm -hmm. disease. Exactly. Um, I think the biggest way to rest in God is to trust him Mm -hmm. and with rest, it's almost like I trust you to protect me, even though nothing around me feels safe or nothing around me feels secure or nothing around me feels certain. So I'm resting in your word. I'm resting in the things that you've promised me in your word. I'm resting on the fact that you still have so much in store for me. I'm resting in the fact that there's no way you will allow me to survive all of this hell allow me to go through all of these transformations just to leave me. I'm resting in the fact that I don't even hear you, but there's purpose even in your silence, you know? So there's a lot of stages of rest that we have to have. We have to have stages of rest that it's almost like we want God to be like humans. He'll never be that. So we have to trust that if I'm going to take a step to have a relationship with you, I have to trust that I got to allow you to show me what it is that I'm scared of, what it is that I probably don't want you to change, you know? And I think the biggest thing in resting is just waiting patiently in trust with him. It's like constant waiting and being okay with that and, and realizing through the waiting, you're so much more better. Like, you're going to find things out about yourself during that waiting period because there's so many different stages of waiting period based off of what it is that you want God to show you, whether that be, should this person stay in my life? You know, yeah. should I continue to see this person? Should I even be hanging out with this specific environment? Um, should I have this job? You know, I need kind of understanding on what's the next step, you know, career wise, financial wise, all of these big decisions, these business decisions that we make. So, Resting requires true trust because it's the same with a, a relationship that you're with, let's say a marriage, and you all hell is breaking loose in your finances and things do not look good, but you literally are resting as a woman, let's say a woman, you're resting in the fact that your husband is gonna leave the household to that we're gonna get through this together, 
that we're gonna we're gonna weather this storm together whatever this is broken not we gonna dry this out together it's the same way with god is that i don't see physical evidence of it yet but i'm resting in the fact and i trust you enough that i'm gonna see this through and that there's something better on the other side and that greater um is he that is in me than 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 everything else that i'm trying to find in other people so I think if we rest, if we use that same trust that we give humans so quickly, mm-hmm. then it will be easier for us to wait on, on wait on God. Woohoo! You girl, you said two powerful words that people don't mm-hmm. did not want to hear. You probably stepped on some toes. Trust <laughs> and patience. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, because we give one away so easily, and then mm-hmm. the second one we have a hard time. We have a battle with because I know yeah. I battle with patience all the time and it girl it has gotten to the point when I'm my prayers I stop saying Lord give me patience because every time I say that I feel like he'd bring another you know right <laughs> another test I'm like bring oh, another Lord. challenge yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah but that but trust and having and having patience and there's purpose in his silence man that's uh that's deep yeah, right there there's purpose and there's purpose in his silence because we mm-hmm. We think that his silence means that he's not listening or he's not doing anything. Right. And that's right. not that's not even the case. Half the time we just need to catch up with his timing. You got exactly. to catch up to God's timing. We have to catch up to him. So sometimes his silence, it is not that he's neglecting you or he's forgotten about you or he's forsaking you. It's just literally a time for you to practice patience and catch up to what it is that he already has planned for you or do the thing that he already told you to do that you ain't even done yet exactly i haven't even done yet I, that was that's so crazy you said that because i was just about to say i feel like a lot of the decisions we've made up until this point that have caused us to be where we don't like where we are has is 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 you can't kind of rush god to adjust or fit into this place that you ain't had no business being in had you listened to him the first time. So it's almost like if I would have just listened to you and waited on you before, I wouldn't even be where I am now. And now I'm trying to rush you to fix this mess, you know, when I'm the one that got me here. I'm the one that was disobedient. I'm the one who didn't rescue you three years ago or two years ago. And now I got to live through those consequences. And of course, you, your grace is still there for our consequences, mm-hmm. but we can't rush you mm-hmm. to adjust to where we had no business being or where we are currently, where we were never even meant to be, you know? Mm-hmm. And although, yes, God knows everything. He knows, you know, the end before we know it. He knows all of that. But also he wants us to know that like, or at least kind of have accountability that a lot of the decisions you have made have nothing to do with me, you know, and you can't rush me to, to try to validate the fact that you made the wrong choice. You can't rush me to do that. Sometimes we want God to back us up with our horrible choices. We want him to, to make ourselves feel better about it. So can't rush him to fit a, a situation that you were never supposed to be in. Girl, I'll be I will over here laughing and grinning hard because I'm laughing at myself because you're absolutely right. Because I did that, you know, I had to live through the consequence of my disobedience because, you know, I hang around and present company inc- included, I hang around and know some amazing women who are doing some big things. And I'm human. So at one point, you know, I started asking God or like, yo, God, because that's because sometimes I had to talk to him like that. Yo, God, what's up? Like you doing X, Y, Z for A, B, and C. You open up this door and this window. You just throwing blessings out of these windows or whatever. Like, why you ain't opened up my window yet? And uh-huh. he had to tell me, uh-uh-uh. Remember three years ago when I told you to do X, Y, Z and you did A, B, C? Yeah. This is the <laughs> consequence of that disobedience. And yeah. Like, yeah. I had to, yeah, really I had to reel it back. <laughs> <laughs> I, had to, I, had to, I had to reel it back. Yeah. You know, and, and because of my disobedience, you know, I experienced a setback, a setback in my definition of setback. You know, to the outside world, 
people think I'm, uh, you know, see me, you know, thriving. But for me, a little bit of a setback. And that's because I was disobedient. Now, in the moment when I was disobedient, to me, everything worked out. You know, right? That's true, true. Yeah, it's three years later, and now I'm, you know, experiencing that consequence. And he, you know, right. he brought that to he brought that to my attention. But you know, he also let me know too that, but purpose is is not delayed, it's not denied. You know, purpose is still going to happen. You know, yeah. so don't get it twisted because even in your in your mistakes and even in your disobedience, you know, I'm still gonna be glorified. Like my plan is still gonna unfold and happen. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's just you know in a it, it's just not in the right. way that I told you to do it. In, you know, in the first exactly. place. So, exactly. Um, I know you have another question, but I do want to touch on something real quick that you said. Yeah. Um, the it was specifically when you were saying how you have to like look at others. And you're like, God, why are you allowing so many things yeah. to happen? And yeah. this is something I talk about constantly on my podcast or just in passing with people is that literally you have to, God will purposely allow people to win around you just to develop you, to um, to be in a spirit of, of thankfulness for other people, to be in a spirit of celebration, to watch others win. And, and, and it's going to train you that, I don't know where I'm going. I have no clue what's going on with my stuff, but it's so exciting to see others win around me. It's so exciting because it reminds me that God has not stopped being God for others. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It reminds me that he's developing me and humbling me to show up for others, to support others wholeheartedly. And then in that, by the time you realize and, and that blessing comes, it's so unexpected because you're so busy being happy for others and celebrating others that now when it's your time it was almost like an organic you know setup it it was like a perfect setup so I think that anybody listening to this please don't negate or underestimate the power of celebrating others and not feeling you know worse about where your brand is going or where your destiny is because other people it just seems like things are going better for them. I always realize that's a that's God divinely testing you to see how you can handle being there for other people when your crap ain't together. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh that's deep right there. I'm gonna have to yeah. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to the podcast myself and just <laughs> and, mar- yeah. and marinate on that just uh yeah. just a little, just a little bit more. Because, uh, yeah, so much wisdom in that. And I, it's, it's so crazy that you word it that way because we live in a cancel culture right now. Mm-hmm. And that's something else that you talked about on, on Instagram because yeah. you put up a post on Instagram. And yeah, it, girl. Like, it, it stopped me. I was just like, yo. I'm so passionate about it. Man, like, oh. man. Because you said you can't cancel who, who God's grace protects. Yes. Take yes. counsel who God's grace protects. And yes. that just hit me thinking. And I'm just like, wow, it's so funny how we rush to judge somebody based off of a mistake that they made. We laugh at them or whatever. And it's like, who are we to do that? Because that same exactly. person that you're counseling, that you're judging or whatever, God has purposed them. He's protected them too. Just like he mm-hmm. purposed and, pro- and he's protecting you, he's on the same mm-hmm. thing for that person as well. So, yeah. So when you said that, I was just like, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, I really hope that seeks in with people. Like, I really hope people um, take a moment and not just liking a post because it just sound good, but really taking a moment and yeah. let that sit in with them yeah. on the inside. Talk to us about how or why cancel culture is not of God. Who child? Um, it's, I mean, let's be honest, especially if you're an active social media user or probably addicted to it like I am, um, not subconsciously, is that the comment section of any uh, major celebrity or, or it's a shade room or a blog site, whatever it is that we get caught up in watching other people's tea and stories is that somebody in those comment sections or on these headlines are being canceled by this by this generation and it's always a mistake they made they said the wrong thing they offended somebody 
um, they they were cheated on their wife or they stepped out or all different kind of areas of being canceled or they they may have even been wholeheartedly wrong when it comes to racism or whatever the case is. There's so many areas where somebody's being canceled and what God I feel like was revealing to me before I made that episode was you know, remind the people that it's so it's okay to address that something was not right. But remember that it takes it's easy to throw the stone, but it it t- it's a re- it takes a real serious energy to extend love to people when they don't deserve it. It it takes a real person to say I probably did worse than them. I'm just probably not popular enough for it to be a headline. And it takes real work to just love people in their mess. It takes real work to do that. So it's like, how can my grace as a human being, as a flawed human, how can it resemble God's perfect grace? Mm -hmm. How in the world can those two worlds, you know, somehow meet, you know? And that's what I had to realize that how, can I merge my grace with God's perfect grace and, and, and publicly not tear others down when they're down? Like for instance, like just recently or not too long ago, um, two major pastors in in the body of Christ, uh, were, were, um, unfaithful to their wives, big pastors and pastors that I've loved over the years. Mm -hmm. And I just remember, you know, seeing how everybody is like going after them and, and, and ready to just destroy them and saying, oh, I know all of this was, you know, people who obviously not are just not spiritually mature. But I can only all I kept thinking is I can only imagine, even though they made those mistakes, how broken they feel to try to rebuild the pieces and how God's people are the quickest <laughs> to not be there as a safety net. And like, how am I going to ever get people to God if I can't do the biggest thing that he gives people for free? And that's grace. You know, how in the world can I lead people to him? And I have no real examples in my life of, of his grace. So I just remember ready to pray for them, ready to, regardless if I'm next to them or not, ready to just be like, God, there, there's still so much more you have for them. And and just really in my heart, just know that they can recover from this. Because we all could get into a cheating scandal. Let's be honest. Nobody wants to ever admit that because it's easy to say what you'll never do. Yeah. But any, it could happen to anybody, yeah. you know. And a lot of us, it's easy for us to hide behind comments and Twitter posts and all of this social media backlash. Yeah. It's easy for us to repost something and hide behind it because it allows us to take a break from our pain. It allows us to sit our mess down, which ain't nobody know about yet, but highlight somebody else's mess. So I think we're all broken and flawed people in need of free grace that God extends every day. That's like the best part of of loving him, of having a relationship with him is that his grace is always there to pick back up the pieces and that I'm so thankful that God is not like humans. I'm so thankful that he does not, he's not ready to throw me in the trash the minute I say the wrong thing or the minute that I put my foot in my mouth, you know, or the minute that I made a bad mistake or I hurt somebody. So there's no amount of cheating. There's no amount of hatred. There's no amount of saying the wrong comments, offending somebody, There's no amount of anything we can do that would ever destroy or separate his grace from us. So why in the world can we extend that same, you know, free gift to other people who need it? So cancel culture will never be of God. There are people who need to be held accountable, of course. Don't ever, I would say, dismiss somebody's faults, but be be quicker to love on them and pray for them because they need it. You know, they need it. So I'm, I'm, I can think, I think anybody can think of mom, people in their life, even if it's not just celebrities that we cancel in family, because we don't want to forgive. It's, it's too, it's too much to address that, but you know, not canceling sometimes takes real forgiveness and you don't even got to be in my life to not be canceled. I just want to have peace with you from afar mm-hmm. instead of, you know, destroying you publicly. 
Man, so much wisdom in, in what you just said, because you're absolutely right. God gives grace for free and forgiveness. Mm-hmm. We don't even want to forgive people. We don't even yeah. allow people the room to make mistakes right. and learn right. their mistakes, learn from right. their mistakes and, you know, and do something, and, you know, and do something better and be refined. You know, it's, it's so crazy to me because we think that there is levels to this. There yeah. are no levels with God. Yeah, there no. are no levels. All sin is the, it's on the same level. So just right. because, you know, you're not cheating on your husband does not mean that, you know, my sin, and I am, doesn't mean that my sin is greater than yours. Exactly. No levels to this when it comes to, when it comes to God. And, you know, who are we to, to judge and counsel somebody when they're going through their job season? Right. We don't even know what God That's is. That's good. That job God season. I love it. Finding that person. They could be in a go in a job season, but we yeah. over here, you know, crushing them and you know talking about them and just like canceling them and you know talking about the wives who want to stick with them. Who are you? Right, who are you right. To that and, to, and to say that because like you because like you said, we're just not popular enough where everybody, where the world knows, you know, our our mess. You know, mm-hmm. we're not on that yet. So we think that we can just get away with it. And it's just like, no, you cannot. You cannot. Exactly. It's like, you know, God gives us an unlimited number of times to come to him and repent and say, God, please forgive me, accept me, you know, help me. But we don't allow that with people. Exactly. So when you say, I'm so glad that God is not human. Oh, thank God he's not human. <laughs> right, right. Right? Because he would have. Yeah let he would have you know stopped messing with us a long time ago long time ago long time and ago. i think the, the cancel when you when you think about everybody that you've ever canceled in your life or you ever thought that you can just kind of destroy their whole reputation or everything about them in just two words they're canceled if you think that 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 you have that much power you're sadly mistaken because god is the only one who has a last say of somebody's destiny of their uh, restoration of, of their transformation. He's the one that controls that. So it, it takes real bitterness and darkness to look at somebody's issues, to look at somebody's pain, to look at somebody's even horrible decision-making and say, you know, you don't deserve a second chance. That That's just not, it's not fair because we can look back on our lives and see how much we were rewarded second chances that we never deserved, mm-hmm. ever <laughs> deserved. So the biggest thing is if you, if you want to follow God, he's going to challenge you to extend grace to others constantly. You know, others that have said the wrong thing to you constantly and don't get it right. He's going to challenge you to extend grace to those um and not be so quick to tear them down and he's gonna also challenge you with strangers because you know it's it's easy to talk about people that we really don't personally know and just assume that oh if I was in your shoes I would have did it differently or I would have said it differently or I wouldn't have stayed with that person like you said but we have no clue what what that would feel like and especially when pastors, I mean, I have a specific passion when pastors or anybody in leadership messes up or doesn't get it right or falls short of, you know, it's it's almost like we don't realize the weight of what that feels like to lead a congregation coming from an empty place that a lot of spiritual leaders are empty, but they're so good at pouring. They're, they're pouring into others from an empty place because they haven't refilled themselves back up. So now that they're susceptible to the devil coming in and trying to destroy or sending temptations mm-hmm. left and right mm-hmm. and because they haven't been able to fill themselves back up. They've been everybody's mentor, everybody's, you know, confidant, everybody's fan and who is filling them back up. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I truly believe pray for your leaders, hold them accountable, but pray for them so much more harder because they're, they're going to fall short. You know, a church is not over because a pastor messed up, you know, a, a congregation is not in broken because somebody said the wrong thing to somebody, you know? So it's yeah. something that we have to already be prepared 
to to be able to love somebody through absolutely and you know that goes back to what uh what we talked about earlier as far as pedestals because if you get to a point where you counseling somebody you need to be asking yourself did you put this person up on a pedestal right right did you put them up on yeah. this pedestal did they you know um fail to meet some you know expectation that they didn't even know that they had that you had put on them like you need to to think about that you know mm-hmm. because nobody on this earth is 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 perfect and it <laughs> I'm laughing because it's like, yo, look at Jesus. The devil tempted exactly. Jesus. He was the only right. one that was able not to, you know, fall to the temptations. But look who he was. He was Christ. Exactly. You know? So of, of course you're gonna be tempted. And of course we're gonna fall for the temptations, but we have to give, we have to give each other's grace and we have to give each other, we have to forgive each other. And forgiveness doesn't mean acceptance and forgiveness doesn't mean, you know, keeping yourself in some, you know, harmful situation or relationship. That's not, that's not what we're saying, you know, right. giving people grace and, and forgiveness. That's another way of really helping you too, because, right. you know, not forgiving somebody that's, it's, it's you literally putting a ball and chain on your own ankles when you refuse to to grant somebody grace and and forgiveness so it's 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 twofold guys it's twofold yes very. yeah but i knew you was gonna i knew you was gonna get our spiritual lives right I knew you, was gonna help us, you know yeah. relationship with god together <laughs> right right you gonna get us all together <laughs> but before i let you go because this was amazing but before i let you go give us one book or audible recommendation because i'm addicted to audible of a book that you've read or listened to that has inspired you in some way? Oh, I got a lot. Uh, I would say, um, believe it or not, um, oh, what's the name? It's, uh, is it Black Privilege? It's a Charlemagne, the, Charlemagne the God. He had a book. Oh, Black Privilege. Black Privilege, yes. Mm-hmm. That book inspired me so much. Um, it really, because it just showed his journey mm-hmm. of how he came from rough starts and how he was so relentless every time he was fired from a job. And he was so relentless to his journey um, to make it in the media world. And that book really inspired me. Also, uh, Bishop T.D. Jake's book, Soar. I love that book. That was a big one that just help me. It, it, it's about business and, and how to move past things and and how to just kind of really connect yourself with where God is taking you in business. Uh, and of course, the word of God. I mean, that's the best yeah. book. But but yeah, I think I, I haven't gotten into audible books. Like I, that's not something I've gotten into, but I definitely love. Oh, and the rich dad, poor dad. I love that. And I love that book. And also Think and Grow Rich. Actually, I have it here. Think and Grow Rich is another favorite book. It's obviously old and dusty, but I love this book. Think and Grow Rich right. by Napoleon Hill. This is obviously a, a gem. Everybody should have this. Everybody should have that. Yeah. Yes. But those are, these books are on, um, I wish that were that. I'm writing it down. These, um, Books are definitely on Audible because I listened to um, Charlemagne, Charlemagne, Black Privilege, and Soar on mm-hmm. on Audible, and um, you know I truly got to know Charlemagne. Listening, just a quick like side note, I truly got to know Charlemagne by li- listening to his book because when Jeremy and I was dating, he would always I would always watch for him um, Guy Code on mm. cable. And Charlemagne mm-hmm. is always on Guy Code. So mm-hmm. I knew Charlemagne from Guy Code. Okay. When mm-hmm. I started hearing him on the radio, I was like, oh my God, this is not the same dude from <laughs> Guy Code. Yeah. Like, who, yeah. who is this dude? I'm like, oh my God, he's such a pompous ass. Like, who is this dude? Like, I, I just, I didn't know him. And so I was reluctant to listen to his book because I was just like, oh, I don't like him anymore. But when I listened to his book, I understood his hustle right I found a newfound respect from from charlamagne because i was able to kind of understand what a lot of that you know lip 
kind of sort of came from. I, mm. I, I mean, I give I give him a pass from talking crazy to people sometimes because you know uh, you he's know, gotten better though. Believe it or he's not, got, he's, he's gotten, gotten way he better. Has. Yes. Like if you if yes. you see the evolution is it's definitely there. The, yes. evolution. the evolution is definitely there. Absolutely. But yeah, but that is that is a great book because his hustle would definitely put you to shame. Because one thing you can't say about him is that you can't say that he that man don't hustle because he does. Exactly. You definitely can't say don't. that. So <laughs> last question. When describing the meaning of living your truth, complete this phrase. I'm gonna give you two words, you tell me what your third word is. Those words are self-awareness, purpose. And self awareness, purpose, yeah. and wait, complete the sentence again. Start from the beginning of the sentence. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when describing the meaning of living your truth, living your truth, okay, complete this phrase. What's your third word? Self awareness, purpose, and and uh, self-love mm, I like self-love that. self -love. that's the biggest part of living your truth you gotta love yourself love on yourself um because that's like just a quick um side note that's been the biggest struggle of what 2020 was for me is i had to re-love back on myself because i didn't know i was gonna struggle with the mental health issues I did in 2020 that was like a roller coaster for me just internally and I had to love on myself I had to relearn how to love myself I had to love on myself completely separate of what a man how a man can love me you know and so that's a big deal in living your truth is you need attention from yourself you know you need your own validation yeah, that's good. That's good. Thank you for thank you for sharing that because I'm pretty sure there was other people too who suffered, you know, uh, from not loving themselves in, in 2020 and learned that lesson as well. So you guys, you're not the only ones who need to love on themselves a little bit more. We all go through it. That's why we're here, you know, sharing our testimonies here on a podcast so you can know that you're not alone. But Kendra, this was amazing, friend. It was. <laughs> Thank you Great. so much. I need you to listen to this episode several times over. And then six months from now, when you find yourself falling outside of what God has told you to do, I need you to come back and listen to this episode again. Because it will happen. You're, you're going to fall outside of what God has told you to do. We're human. It's, it's, it's inevitable. Right? You're going to do it. Use this episode as your accountability partner because I know this conversation has stressed your thinking, it has stressed your actions and your belief system in unimaginable ways. I know it did and I'm glad about it. And next week, I'm going to stretch you in how you take care of yourself health-wise. So make sure to come back and join the conversation. Family, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my podcast every single week. If you need help creating a strategy that you can refer back to after being blindsided to reduce your downtime, then head on over to strategizeyourvision.com to enroll in class today because the doors are officially open. Also know that all Audible recommendations given on any episode are linked in the show notes below and you can try Audible for free. Please remember to leave a five-star rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Also, don't forget to click the join community link that's in the show notes so we can stay connected. Family, as you know, I said I'd love to go to touch one million hearts within the first two years of the podcast, and I can only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode and share this conversation with at least four people you know and repost on your favorite social media platform. Well, family, I appreciate you. And my heart is filled with so much gratitude. And until next time, always remember that you are enough and your truth is beautiful. Bye.